welcome to Carnage. Hi everyone. What we are about to do today is something that if you were to do that to me while I was asleep, there would be war. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm going to show you the root system of a catacetum. I'm going to explain to you why they are so good to grow in LECA and self-watering. And I'm going to show you as well why it's going to be a pain to get them off the LECA. The worst roots to get off LECA, in my opinion, are catacetinae roots. So that's one part. The second thing is we're going to be dividing my catacetum orchid blade jack of diamonds here. And then I want to see what this steak looks like, which is a commercial Phalaenopsis steak that you get when you buy your hybrids from the big box store, which I have taped up with sellotape as the first ever support when I potted this orchid up. I want to see how that steak has held up through the past four years. And if I need to replace it for the repot, I will do that. But if not, we will reuse the same steak. Okay, let's get into it. Of course, lift your pot by your tag syndrome. Love it. Gotta love catacetinae that they do this. Next step, carnage. Let's do this. And you know what's so sad about doing this? is that in this potting up method and setup, roots are still viable. It is such a shame to destroy this. And that is why I do not repot my catacetinae every year, because the roots stay viable in LECA and self-watering. But needs must, I want to divide this orchid. I have somebody that wants to have a cut of it, or a bulb in this case, and we're gonna deal with that now while the orchid is fast asleep. And uh, I may need my hammer for this. So I'll be back. This is gonna be interesting, let's go. Now, despite being able to be this radical, I have to be careful with the bulbs that I'm holding on to. They are fleshy, they are juicy, don't wanna bruise them. I do have a tight grip. But still, it's not like we can talk about catacetinae being robust and they can take a lot of abuse. Nope. On the contrary, the bulbs themselves are very, very easily damaged. Can we move you now? This catacetum has been in this pot for four years. <laughs> I didn't want to soak this to start with because it is asleep. I'd like to keep it asleep, especially when it comes to shipping the bulbs. So we're going to keep going. Squeezing the pot is ridiculously impossible. <laughs> I want to save my pot. My nursery does not actually sell these pots anymore. They've gone all green. So white pots like this are not available for me anymore and I don't want to ruin it. I'll be back when I've got her out of the pot and then we'll look at the roots. And that is when you know you've lost the fight so we can break the pot. What a shame, oh well. Now, you may be wondering, why don't I just cut the bulb off at the top? Well, I want to show you the extensive root system with the bulbs in place. Push comes to shove. If this continues to be such a fight, I will then just cut the bulbs off at the top because at the end of the day, that's what we're going to be doing anyway. Chainsaw anyone? <laughs> the last time I broke a pot deliberately, thinking that I had an endless source for these white pots was with my Pro Catavola Golden Peacock. This was not the plan. What a shame. Oh well, you see the thing is that I have to be super careful because I don't want to be bashing the bulbs.
Ta-da! Oh, if I could share the aroma coming out of these roots with you, like fresh cut grass, it's gorgeous. And that just shows me that, oh, you know, a lot of people every season cut their catacetinae off at the bulbs, store them when they start new growth, then they pot them up again and they start a new root system, which is absolutely doable, but I can't do that to an orchid that has viable roots. It's just amazing. And they're still damp, of course, because my setup is Lekka and self-watering. So my catacetinae, even while they're dormant, they get a flush maybe every two weeks, just to make sure that the root bolt maintains some kind of wet environment so that the Lekka doesn't lose its wicking potential. And that maintains the root system intact. So when the orchid breaks dormancy, she already has a lot of energy that she can draw on. But look, this is what I want to show you. They are so papery, so delicate. So we are always very wary about the rot in catacetinae and why we shouldn't water at X amount of time. And that is because the roots, they might look strong, powerful, fleshy and abundant when they start growing, you know, and you think what can go wrong? But they're not. They're very, very delicate and volatile. And because of their papery nature, it is going to be the worst nightmare getting catacetinae roots off of Lekka. I literally go Lekka by Lekka if it doesn't fall off on its own and scrub each one with a little scrubby pad to get the white papery stuff off. The only, only downside, in my opinion, of growing catacetinae this way, but my goodness, this orchid, if I didn't mention it before, has been four years in this pot. And it's one gorgeous ball of roots. See, even growing tips. So I cannot bring myself to do this every year just because I know that this pot, well, it's got a healthy root system. Oh well, the orchid is growing. It has got enough bulbs to divide and that's what we're going to do. And now let's get the bulb off. Separate it from the mass underneath. I did not want to separate this little bulb on the bottom. I want to keep it on because what I want to do is send three bulbs as a good start for the new owner and not separate them out. I wonder if I just twist. Oh boy, this is like concrete. I'm going to take my time. Root by root, if need be. There we go. <laughs> this, I'm going to soak this for I don't know how long, but to dislodge it and get at least some head start before trying to get it off and get my lekker out of here. Incredible. Oh, again, the smell is amazing. Right. My steak also seems to have survived. That's great. So I can use that one again. If I can get it out. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to reuse this again. Right. And what have we got here? So I'm going to divide it through the middle right there. Keep the bulbs in the front two for me and three for the new owner. The little one is a bit wobbly, but I'm going to leave it attached. Just want to make sure maybe I can just break them off. Yes, that's easier than going in with the secateurs and possibly damaging the lower part of the bowl. Now, if you were to keep your both pieces, I wouldn't need to pot this up straight away. I could just leave it on a shelf and wait for a new growth to appear before potting it up. That's not what I'm going to do because I want to be ready for when the new roots come and not fiddle around when they have started growing and then the problem starts. My Lekka in storage is wet. Roots shouldn't be wet straight away. So we're going to be potting this one up in Lekka and self-watering again 
But I'm going to show you how to do that if your lecker is wet so that you don't touch the bulbs and then let the lecker dry out seeing as there are no roots and you're ready to go when new roots come. So I'm just going to fuss a little bit with my bulbs and get some of these sheaths off and then we'll go to the repotting. But what is going to happen with this little back part here? It can literally go, oh, I managed to damage that bulb. We need some cinnamon straight away. This is easily fixed. It's a shame, but as I mentioned before, they look tough, they look rough, they feel hard, but they're very, very delicate. So is my cinnamon going to come out? There we go. Right, so what's going to happen with this? It's literally just going to go into a little shoebox and off to its new owner. And it will wake up in its new home, new setup, and hopefully give the new owner as much joy as it has given me over the years. And a quick side note, I've also spread cinnamon on where it broke off from the front bulbs. And the same thing, if I have to, I will do it on the back here, but it doesn't look like anything here is open. So there's no need for cinnamon here. Okay, let's pot my two bulbs up. Trisha's Orchid Life, thank you so much. This is the first time I'm going to be using the Velcro that you sent me. I appreciate this a lot because I want to try something with my bulbs in the back here, but I can't use this exclusively because it's going to slip down the stake. So what I would like to achieve is create like a wrap around the bulbs that will then provide kind of a buffer for the wire, like a cushion to keep the bulbs from getting too garroted by the wire. Because the next thing here is those bulbs need to stay on the support tight. They cannot move. There is no room for movement when those roots grow. They have to be solid. Okay, let's see what height do we want them at. Thinking plus four years, maybe three, but that looks about right now. I'm very tempted to put this into the middle, so forgive me for considering this for a moment. Very, very tempted. And if you change your mind throughout the process, go with that. My stake needs to be closer to the bulbs. They need to fit snug. Now that I've divided this catacetinae, it could possibly shoot out a growth in the back has to be taken into consideration. I'm glad I thought of that while messing around. Okay, the reason I want my height is because I want to wrap these in the Velcro as a buffer, and I hope I'm doing this right, for my wire, which will then be wired to the stake. You can tell I've never used this Velcro before. I'm looking like an absolute beginner, but there we go we have ourselves a little bit of a brace, buffer, cushion thing. If the bulbs were to shrivel throughout this process while they still sleep, not a problem because by that time I can start to readjust the wire. This is now to get the orchid situated, get it started, get it settled, and then observe from here on in. And there we have it, Jack of Diamonds, ready to go for new growths and new roots. Once the new roots start growing, when they touch the lecker, seeing as that lecker will be dry by then, I will be starting to move the lecker out of the way, depending on where the growth comes out, make myself more of a gap and let the roots grow down. That is the plan. And then fill up with dry lecker as soon as they are at a certain length. Now, in the past, I've not been able to monitor my catacetinae roots in order to know when to start watering. I have never really put that much importance in not being able to see the roots in the pot. I've always taken the lead from what is happening at the top. So we will revisit this orchid when the time comes. We will keep revisiting her and see how she grows. And I hope she wakes up happy and isn't grumpy with me and collapses simply because I've taken part of her off. If I hadn't intended on dividing her this time around, you saw how pot-bound she was 
she would have needed to go into a bigger pot. And what I would have done is not divided her, but I would have taken off the old root system, give her a reset and put her back into a bigger pot with all her bulbs attached. That is also an option. There is no need to be dividing catacetinae just because we can. She looks a little haphazard right now, but she is steady in the pot. She's going to go back on her shelf until she wakes up. And that's when we'll be back and have a look-see. Meanwhile, thank you so much for having a look-see at my video, watching me destroy this orchid's habitat, so to speak. I hope everything goes well from here on in. 99% chance everything is going to go fine. With orchids, there's always a 1%, you know, the uh-oh moment when you think, now what happened? Meanwhile, I've got myself a headache to clean up with that root ball and get my leka out of there. Oh, it'll take me probably three days. <laughs> Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe and take care. Bye.